hi guys welcome back to yet another vlog thank you so much for clicking in case you know on this channel you're most welcome and if you're my returning subscriber thank you so much for always coming back to watch my videos so guys as you know and i told you in another previous video that we have a part two don't mind about our background okay you know we are in lean zabu's world <laughs> She gives it to you raw and unfiltered. Yes. Lynn, do you mind uh, introducing yourself again because this is a new vlog? Yeah. Hi guys, hi team, Harriet Anabo. How are you doing today? My name is Lynn Zabu and my YouTube channel name is Lynn Zabu's World. And there I share with you just unfiltered content to do with lifestyle, music. Uh, charity and all those things. So you do all those things on your channel? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see what Lynn Zabu's world does, kindly go and check her out on her YouTube channel, guys. So as we told that we have a part two, we are going to continue with where we stopped with the last video. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lynn is going to be telling us. Mm -hmm. eh, you've seen Lynn's house, <laughs> how it looks like that. Eh, you call it loft house? Yes, it's a loft house. Yes, you've seen how it looks like. Mm -hmm. And you guys already have questions like, how did Lynn come up with this idea how did Lynn come up with a house like this because as I told you she's a young lady but she inspires a lot let me tell you a lady like this to have a house of her own hey let me pinch Lynn can you please try to pinch me so that I can also receive it Amen. Receive it. I receive it in Jesus name I should amen. build a house as soon as possible yes you're very hard working you're going to get it. amen amen mm -hmm. so Lynn um, is going to be sharing with us mm -hmm. a story her story she mm -hmm. has a story behind her house yeah yeah uh, so I think on the previous video we were mm. talking about how I got here yeah. and uh, how I got the money. Mm. So around 2017, mm. ha. Ha, I'm going to give away my age. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Anyway, yeah. time happens, things happen after I graduate from university i started journalism and mass communication mm. at university then i graduate and things get really tough and tough and tough but uh, before they got tough i used to do music so there's a time where i had started up like coming up you know when they have started noticing you mm. those small small notices like you go to the market and one or two people can recognize you yeah. and, and you feel like yes i am somebody mm. then all of a sudden boom you go back to zero like you don't have any more money for the videos and blah blah mm. so i decided to go to dubai by the time i went there it was um, a time where my parents thought, oh, when you go to Dubai, you die. You know those stories, oh, those yeah. stories when yeah. they used to come up like, so-and-so died here, so-and-so, yeah, so it was mm. a very terrifying thing. When I told my dad I want to go to Dubai, he was like, no, you're not going. I was mm. like, in my heart, I was like, Let's. By that time, you were still staying with your parents? No, I wasn't staying with my parents. I stopped staying with my parents in my vacation, okay. senior season. Okay. So you can see the kind of determination I've had in hey. my life. Like I've always wanted <laughs> to be my own person. Yeah. So anyway, um, why my father got to know, because he would never have known in the first place, but why he got to know is because I told him I needed some assistance, I needed some money. And my father was like, no, you're not going somewhere. In my heart, I was like, let's see. <laughs> Anyway, I end up in Dubai and so many things happened and so many things happened. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I, I, I think I spent like five months without a job. Mm -hmm. Then I came back to Uganda, went through some treatment and then I was like, God, you can't take me to Dubai. Show me all those lights. <laughs> mm -hmm. Show me all those big cars. Show me all those hey. buildings. No, yeah. you can't bring me here and I don't... So that time you had gone, you had not yet worked at all? No, okay. I spent like five months mm. and that is a story for another day. Mm. Yo. Anyway, I returned back to Dubai when I healed and then I got the job. Okay. So when I got the job, I think God was kind of keeping that job for me. 
because it was a very, to my standard, that was a very juicy job because I was earning very, very good money. Mm. I was earning 3.5 million shillings every mm -hmm. month and I was getting tips. Okay. So most times, uh, most times, by the time my salary came, I've already cleared my other expenses mm. and all that stuff. And I used to keep my money, like I had, when I, before I left, I had an ATM. Okay. Uh, I mean uh, a bank account. So I'd send my money on. Okay. And that's how I managed to save up that money. Mm -hmm. Now the thing is, when Corona happened, mm. guys, there is my hand. It is eating my plants, and I feel <laughs> like no, go. <laughs> anyway, so I reached and got the job, and because I did not. I, I termed myself mm. on my spending cultures, mm. like I stopped buying things that I did not need. Mm. I would only pay for my mother's rent. Because me, when I was going, I sold off everything. So basically in Uganda, I was homeless. You had no home in Uganda? No! You had I, no option, uh, you had no, no a hope of coming no, back? No, no, no. And you know guys, when you have no hope of returning back, there is a way you have to make sure you make it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, yeah. Because mm. if not, then you'll be scared about coming back, people laughing at you, people putting it into shame. And that is the whole perspective. And uh, I try to talk about that mostly on my channel because I realize most people go in, um, in the diaspora mm. and because of shame, they don't want to return back home because exactly. what they will people nothing. say? Mm. Oh, I sold this. They have nothing to return to. And it is, um, it is one of the most devastating states uh, a human being can be in. So, I had to make sure <laughs> I save money yeah. to replace the things I had sold off in Uganda before I left. Mm. Um, thankfully, I did not have a lot of uh, debts. I had, I had like two, three, and I cleared them because my salary was good. Mm. So... I kept my money for about two years. So I know you guys are calculating, <laughs> but do not calculate because do not. <laughs> because I used to get a weekly tip. Mm. We used to get weekly tip. Mm. This is how it works in Dubai. You get a weekly tip okay. for some companies, I, I most of the companies. Mm. So even on the month, like some customers pay with card. Oh, by the way, I was a waitress. If you're asking what yeah. Yaba was doing, mm. I was doing to as a waitress. Mm. So we, they give you tips uh, in cash. Mm. There are some customers who pay in cash. Then there are some other customers who pay on card. So we would receive the tips of the card at okay. the end of the month. Mm. But this cash one would receive every single Sunday. Mm. Yeah. So that's how I managed to save up the money. Mm. And as soon as Uganda, as soon as the world relaxed a bit about, you know, movements yeah, and all that, COVID. Mm. I came back here. So. I asked my father to look for me for the plot because my father knows people mm. who know people mm. who know people that are trustworthy. <laughs> yes, exactly. So my father looked for a space here where I am right now, mm. and um, I was able to secure it for myself. Oh wow! Yeah. So when I secured the place. Mm. Then I fenced it mm. with the remaining balance of the money that I had. I fenced it off. Why? Because I did not want to have those wrangles. Because I'm still oh. working in Dubai, mm. and when you're working away, you don't know when you come back. People have taken a few inches. Exactly. They always people do this have stuff done to people. this, and mm. people. So it was kind of a protective method for me okay to fence Just off the case. land because mm. i did not want rangos i'm a very peaceful person i don't like fighting mm. so i'll do anything to prevent an outbreak mm. so that's what i did and then i went back worked for more two years and then i came back okay. 
you guys have heard where she got the money from so don't ask how did she get the money she has explained to you how she mm. got the money to save up for her house and that's what i always keep on telling people that when you go out in the diaspora you know you're going to get greener pastures like come back home do something industrious so now we want to know like because we have seen you have you have a high that a house that is a loft house mm. which is very rare by the here in uganda for someone to have a, a loft, loft house, house yes. yeah because sometimes people don't like such kind of houses mm -hmm. but for you as a young lady that you are how did you come up with that idea of constructing your own um loft house initially mm. i was uh, when i came back to dubai like i got sick in Dubai mm. and then I had to return mm. because my legs were very worn out but what demoted like what really pushed me is my friend hired me mm. and then we got misunderstandings and then I fired myself because I had waited for her for that particular job mm. for like five months and when it came she she was like a bestie somebody i had known for some time mm. and then when the job came we got misunderstandings and um, i didn't like the way she talked to me because you gotta watch how you talk to me <laughs> like I, yeah. i'm i'm really not a very troublesome person yeah and i know i'm not sure. and i know i'm not perfect i am no angel i do wrongs but when you want to put your point across there is a tone we should as human beings use you know to express our dismay mm. so if you notice a red flag on in any situation be it a friendship mm. relationship and you can't fix it for example if you're with somebody and you know you love them so much that you don't want to talk to them about the things that they've done you keep quiet mm -hmm. and the more you keep quiet you're hurting yourself like you're suppressing yourself at the end of the day it's you it's your mental health it's exactly your, yeah mm -hmm. so i had kept in some things for a very long time mm. for a very long time and that one time she came into the office she stood there and gave me that attitude and i said nothing and i got my laptop my bag went back to my room booked the next flight and then i came back here. so i know maybe it was rational but that's <laughs> life that's life yeah. you gotta be ready to move mm. so anyway um then i quit the job my legs were not because the other was an office job i realized i can't go back into waitressing because my legs can't couldn't handle it anymore mm. so i decided to come back to Uganda. Okay. Now when I became when I came back to Uganda, I tried to have a business like I told you okay. of selling clothes. I started um having a boutique mm. and going to town like I would go to town every single day to sell those clothes. Mm. And the returns were very bad. You know when you're used to earning money, good money. You cannot <laughs> fit <laughs> So I couldn't fit yeah. in the business world. Mm. And 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 I don't think I'm a business oriented person. I'm more of a craft person. Mm. Yeah, I'm more of an art mm. of a, but I'm not aggressive business wise, okay. you know, when it comes to that thing. Mm. So I found myself bankrupt. <laughs> okay. Yes. I found myself very very bankrupt. Um oh by the way, I have very good music which I was investing in and mm. at a certain point I felt like okay, this music is making me very bankrupt and I need to do something because i remember you told us before you left for dubai mm. you were still into music mm. so when you came back you wanted also uh -huh. invest more again I did. in music i invested more in music <laughs> that is why and you then in the in the business, in the business and then yeah. both of the ventures did mm. not work out and then i went bankrupt oh, okay. so initially uh, when i was still renting i'd make sure i pay either three months up front or six months depending on the house I'm renting mm. if it's cheaper I would pay six if it's more expensive I'd pay three why because I give myself time 
to pay. Oh. So I don't be on pressure. Oh, where is next month's rent? Mm. Oh, where, yeah, that it's I, always good to pay in advance. I did not like that, <laughs> guys. It's very hectic, and yeah. I think it's it's one of the reasons as to why I had to build this house. So I was like, okay. I had three million left mm. in my account. No, it was like three point eight. So in my mind, I was like, okay, now that I'm going to lose this money, mm. if I if I keep this money on my account, I'm surely going to lose this money. What do I do? So I went to my friend Joshua, who is my friend's brother. <laughs> I tell her Joshua. I had gone to Pinterest and seen this very nice design mm -hmm. of a wooden house. Mm. So I went to her, I was like, okay, now take me, I want you to build for me this kind of house. Mm. And he was like, clean. You want that house, it's nice. But you know in Uganda we have bad weather. <laughs> And also because you know that place is a new place for you, you don't know how the security of that place is, mm. I would suggest you use that same money to start uh, with at least one room. Mm. So I was like, but Joshua, where will I get money for iron sheets, money for this, money mm. for that? Yeah, it's not possible. So Joshua was like, you start, you don't know where God will get the money from. Mm. So I started and I got like 2,000, is it 2,000? It could be big in English as well. 2,000? Yes, 2,000 <laughs> bricks. I got 2,000 bricks. Yeah. I got seven sacks of, ba seven bags of cement. I got sand. I got, and all the money on my account was over. Over. <laughs> so I come here. I start uh, praying. I start crying. Everything, you know. Mixed feelings. Everything. Mm. So they start the house and it goes well. Thank God. And then I get my cousin sister, who works now in Dubai. She starts giving me loans. She's like, Lean, you are there for me, so I want to be there for you. So she starts giving me some of her money, she lends me her money, mm. and then I start. So initially the plan was to have one room, and that is the, how do you call Musil? The foundation. Uh -huh, the foundation. Mm. The foundation was for <laughs> one room, but there was provision for the balcony. Okay. But when I looked at the things I have in the rent in the rented house I have, and then looked at this one, mm. I was like, no, this is not going to be enough. Mm. So what I'm going to do mm. is um, to extend. extend so I space. remove the balcony and I put a room, mm. so I'll figure out what mm. to do with a balcony later. Mm. So that's how it all started progressing. And then you do this and then I can get some kamani from my clothes. Then I put, I get some kamani. So it was a journey of one by one. So I was like, yeah, but I've always wanted to have a loft house. Maybe they can put this one. Mm. So that's why the house is the way it is because it kept on progressing from one mm. i knew the idea i wanted but i was careful in the foundation mm. and also with the material that was being that used, was being used mm. okay so actually there's something that i skipped guys so mm. uh, you told us about your dad getting you land mm. by the time your dad got you land were you in the country or you weren't in the country no, the i moment? was i was not in the but country. you were trusting your yes your no he dad. no he told me yeah. No, thing is, I can never send you money to do for me something. I'll always have to be there in mm. person. Mm. I asked him to look for the land, and when he got it, when he found it, I told him, Daddy, book it for me. When I come, I'll pay. He was like, no, I'm not booking for you, because what if you don't pay me back? That's when parents <laughs> start playing <laughs> politics. Yeah. But uh, luckily, by the time I told him mm. to look for the land, mm. I already had the money okay. to purchase the land. Yeah. Um, so I bought it even in bits. I, I, didn't, I didn't buy it in one oh, whole. Okay. So I first bought 
the small one and then add it okay the extension for it to look this big so how was the process for you uh, of getting the land because there's a person who is watching right now maybe they want to get land in uganda how can they go okay the first thing is to have money ready when you have money ready you can have land anywhere mm. uh, when you have land here when you have money ready uh, you can get land yeah when mm. you have money cash money or doesn't matter where it is could be in the bank whatever but make sure you're not going to look for the money because what people do you can look for land you find it mm. you pay for that land half of it mm. then somehow you fail to pay for the balance and mm. then they will take your land yeah you get mm. so the advisable thing to do is have money before you start looking for the land mm. yes have money before you start looking for the land then when you start looking for the land mm. you will buy that fits within your budget okay then later you can resell and get something like that like let's say you want land in Muyenga but you can't buy land in Muyenga mm. what do you do go to Ndeje buy land that is within your means okay. leave that land for some time then resell it after some time if you because gotten, by the way land appreciates yes yeah. land appreciates so mm. if you get more money you'll have seen even other better places than exactly yeah. yes so first i had to collect the money and have it at hand second i had to make sure that the chairman of this place is the chairman of this place mm. uh, they can bring you the chairman of uh, <laughs> Yansana as the chairman of Vundeji. Uh, and then before you know it your money Going. Going. <laughs> yeah. So I had to first make sure the chairman of this place is the the real chairman because I checked my father's land titles and agreements mm. and um, I could see that it is the same person that I'm going to buy from. Mm. Then I had to look at the location of the place because of course daddy told me where the place is but I had to come here in person and check look around mm. the environment. I don't like churches being near me. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm a Christian. <laughs> and i love church <laughs> but there are some churches <laughs> that can <laughs> yeah hey. there are some churches if that... you know you know hey, there are some churches that have services yeah. every single day <laughs> and loud hey. so i had to make sure mm. there is no church around um there is no unfortunately there's a mosque around but for the mosque i can bear because they you know the particular hours you will hear them. yeah yeah it's evening it's, time yes it's mm. somehow and then i had to make sure it is not a wetland mm, mm. because wetlands are expensive to build and also because i love the environment so much there is no way i can build in a wetland mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> at least i go and buy in the village mm. but not in a wetland yeah. first of all if you buy in a wetland it is mm. expensive and risky for you for you yeah that's true and then it is also bad for the environment mm. yeah because yeah. where you're building is where water is, water supposed, is to, supposed to pass to collect mm. from to, so if you don't you're contributing to the bad climate or the bad weather that is already happening in mm. the world mm. uh, so i try even the construction itself when you construct in a, w a wetland mm. or a area that is swampy and all that it's very expensive you have to first money put in something then the foundation to hey, it's very so it's very, very expensive, very expensive. Yeah. so i had to look at where is the location how far is it from the road mm. how far are the electric poles how much am i going to invest those are all the amenities yes okay. like you have to think about all those things before mm. you buy land like before if they take you to buy land first look around see if i want to water connection how far is the water going to like where is the water going to come from mm. if i want power how far is the way how many meters will i need mm. those kinds of things some people don't look at them but right me yeah. even if i'm a first time land owner mm. but i already had that in my mind like okay i'm broke how am i going to get power i don't have enough money <laughs> to get power from from yeah yeah mm. yes then the other thing i looked at was um, my neighborhood 
I really, really, really <laughs> care about my neighborhood. Okay. Yes, as, as you can see, we mm. are not like the bougie, bougie type of neighborhood. <laughs> but I think we are peaceful. It's calm. Yeah. It's a very calm neighborhood for me. Mm. And also the road that leads to where you're going. So where you passed is not the best, but we have but other other paths, but that was the easiest okay. for me to direct you. Okay. It's like it's the most direct. Mm. Yeah, so um, the other thing that I considered um, was, is it Milo land or title land? Yeah. Each type of land is different. Title land is ownership, like you have the title to the land. Mm. And then Milo land is Kabaka's land. Yes, yeah? yes. And then each have different benefits. Mm. When you have Kabaka's land, it is very difficult for somebody to claim it is their land. Mm. It is difficult for somebody to steal it twice. Mm? I'm not saying it is impossible, but it's a bit tricky. It's mm. a bit difficult. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, title land or land ownership land, like mm. land that you want, yeah. you can go there when there are like five people who have the same title and you don't know. So it consumes more time. Yeah, because it consumes more time mm. for you to actually have the true ownership of uh, title land. You get, mm. and then Kabaka's land is easier. The only problem is that you have to pay Busuru. I don't know but what is Busuru. Busuru is <laughs> like Thai. <time. laughs> hey, <laughs> okay. Busuru is like um, there is a. It is very small. It's like twenty-five mm. a year, a whole year. Oh, twenty-five thousand? Yeah, I think so. Okay, it's Doesn't very small if it's a year. I, yeah. You hear even I'm saying I think because I'm not sure. Okay. If, you know, mm. because it's very low. So all of those things that you have to consider before you actually get done. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then when it comes to um, if someone is out there and then they want to invest in land. Okay. Right? Yeah. So when you're buying land, the other thing that I forgot is you have to consider your intentions for that particular type of land. Mm. If you're buying for investment and investments differ, mm. there are some who use agriculture, some use it for hotels and so you must put in, in mind the location of the place is what is most important because when you have your land in a good location mm. you can use it for anything mm. you can use it for uh, rentals you can use it for airbnbs you can use it for hotels for so always consider location of your place mm. then there are some other people who love to buy in town but mm. when in town is very expensive hey, and yet hey, you hey, can hey, go hey, hey, hey. aside just uh -huh. outside of town me i just got lucky here honestly yeah because when i came here guys i was asking lean like how did you manage get, getting this land i in think town? i like, got i got lucky by the time i got this it was about 36 million mm. but right now hmm. Right now, if you decide to now sell it to someone else, <laughs> how much would you sell it? <laughs> By that time, like how many years now? How many years? Now? Not too many years. It's like five years ago. Okay. Yeah. About this land in 2021. Mm. So we are in 2024. Mm. Yes. Um, so. In just four years, honestly, I'm not even joking. If you just move out there and ask for the small piece, like from the gate mm. to where the wire is starting, mm. they'll tell you 20 million. Mm. Yes. I don't know how I got lucky, okay. but this place is now very expensive. It used to be affordable then, mm. right now it's not. So. I'm happy I got here because I can use this for very many things. Yeah, like you have a lot of space. You even have a, a, <laughs> a kitchen garden besides like yes. everything you can have it. Mm -hmm. Other people might want to ask me how much did the whole construction well, did that? Yes, yes, yes. take. Mm. But the answer is, um, I don't know. 
I honestly don't know because I know how much I started with, which was three million shillings, mm. and that included paying labor, and uh, and also the cost of building depends on where you are. There is one thing that remains constant is the cement, but everything else differs depending on like sand. Some other people buy sand at 200, some other buy it at 50, mm. depending on your location. So mm. I can't say w what, for who. You can't estimate for Yes, I cannot estimate for you, but I can estimate that it costed me three, approximately 3 million shillings from the ground, the foundation. from the foundation to the first, uh, how do you call it? Uh, I'm still not confident with terms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then from there, yo, guys, starting from foundation to the beam. Mm. The beam, beam, yes. To yes. the beam. Mm. It's very easy. Mm. Very easy. But after the beam, get stuff. <laughs> <laughs> get stuff. Okay. You may look at it like... Um, I think the most expensive thing about building or construction is the finishing part. The finishing is always... Yes, the finishing is really hard. Really? Yes. Because, aha, uh -huh, let me calculate for you. You have to buy nails, you have to buy timber, and timber you have to buy extras because you have this that they use as madala. Mm? Mm -hmm. Then you have to buy, uh, how do you call it? There is a wire that they use to tie the bricks but let's say the basics you have to buy uh, iron sheets, iron sheets yes. or matebula if you're rich mm. Mm -hmm. now after that you have to pay labor 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 mm. now that is like okay -ish. now start plastering you know how many bags of cement you need to plaster <laughs> <laughs> then after plastering, yeah. no, before plastering, mm. after the house is done with the roofing, yes. now you need to call electricians to put in the, the pipes where the power is going to be passing. Mm. Mm? Even the water connection people. Then after mm. that, you need to call plasters. Then they come and plaster the house. Mm. After plastering the house, then you have to call the person to color the house. Now that is two phases. Mm. They have to first put undercoat, then put lime cement, then put color. It's a whole process. Wow. Then after that, you have to tile the house. Mm. Then after tiling the house, then you have to color now, put color. Then after coloring, now you have to Remember the pipes the the electricians put, they just put for just mm. the pipes. Mm. Now you have to call them to put in wires for the electricity. <laughs> so now yeah. after that, you can say you're done. Mm. But those things that you they're like the bathtubs, not even the bathtubs. Those small small like things. Finishing the house. Whoa! Before you know it, it's. <laughs> Because I feel like you still it have... It took me a yeah. month. Mm. It took me a month to get the house to to the ceiling and, and that. But for me to do the plastering, guys, I'm even dizzy thinking about the whole process. It was very tough. Yeah. But um, the whole thing is start. Start? start? Mm. And then you never know. Mm -hmm. You'll get the money. Because that's how Lynn started. Like when she started, yeah. she was actually scared. But she, she had the land already. Mm -hmm. But she wanted at least to put in something in the land. But mm -hmm. she just started. And, because I feel like that's the advice that you would give the young people mm -hmm. who want to start up their own. Yeah. Um, let's say construct their own house and all that. But they don't know how to go about it. Like the only thing I could advise such a person is start small. Mm -hmm. Let's say you, you can go and buy land in the village and leave your money there then buy another plot and that's actually how some people get rich mm. Mm. You buy land here buy land there you don't you don't 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 get stagnant in one place oh me i want kampala i want kampala mm. rich people live in far far places, yes, far, far <laughs> places. Yes. 
Eh? Yes, so Jimmy. <laughs> they know how we, they I don't by the way, I always I don't know but most of the time when I move in remote areas, mm. I always find fancy houses and I wonder what is this rich guy doing here? Because there is no noise. <laughs> yeah. And the pollution is very nice. Yeah. The pollution like okay, right here mm. where I am. Have you had any no. funny smell? I think the only smell you'll hear is my dog's that one. <laughs> Apart from that, okay. nothing. You will not hear smania, car smoke. Mm. Mm. A lot of pollution is going yes. on. It's not here. Mm. So, um, Lynn, which advice would you give someone that, um, okay, someone that is watching us, either in the diaspora or here in Africa, which advice would you give a person? Oh, if you're in the diaspora and you're African and mm. you feel like you don't belong there, come home. We have learned to accommodate all of you. The other day I was moving through Uganda and I was like all this land bare and land is not yet so so expensive exactly. in some parts of Uganda. Mm. So come come back home. You will receive love here. We live simple lives. But uh, if it's working for you, mm. well and good, enjoy it while it lasts. But if it's not, don't be ashamed, don't be embarrassed to come back home. Always come back home. Yes, always come back home. You always find a way to start, yeah? Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, save. Because when you come here with a little bit of saving, it will save you a lot of... Um, a lot of things, basically. It's good to have your small company mm. when you're going to relocate. But mm. don't be there and feel like... I think the other thing that helped me so much to relocate back to Uganda mm. was because I knew that I would never get a visa in Dubai, like a permanent residence visa. Mm. So you're always mm, doing visa changes. Okay, every I time. was like, no, mm. no, no, no. I'm not no. doing this anymore. Not me. <laughs> Yes, so yeah. don't be afraid to come back home, find a special, I don't know, you must have ground yourself to know that this is your life, mm. people are going to laugh, people are going to talk anyway. Mm. Whether you do what or what, for us we shall talk. <laughs> <laughs> eh? We shall talk. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day. Do something that gives your soul peace. Exactly. Yeah, that's all I can tell you. And if you want to buy land or anything that is very expensive, please mm. do not buy on the phone. Do not... While you have a loan, it is a sim. Like uh, you buy cows, you buy hens on the phone. You call your sister. Oh, sister, <laughs> now buy for me a cow. <laughs> eh? You send money. Eh? You're going. Eh. You're going. While you are the the syndicate center, you will have for that you know. You will buy a plot of of uh, ten million at twenty million. At twenty million, yeah. Yeah, that's possible. So it is very very important mm. for you to always be on ground when you're making those kinds of decisions. Mm. Yeah, mm. you guys have heard it from Lynn Sabu. So Lynn, those ones who don't know about your social, your other social media handles, where can they get you? Okay. Because, by the way, she's a musician, guys. You the should name tell is them. Lin Zabu. <laughs> Lin Zabu. Yeah. This one. <laughs> Please come and uh, join my world. Mm. And um, let's see what we can do. It's it's just Lin, L-Y-N-N-E, then Zabu. Zabu. You know? Yeah. And uh, you'll see all the things that I've managed to do with myself so far. Yeah. Wow, that was so nice. We really had an interesting interview with Lynn and I hope this won't be the last time we of are course doing not. this, guys. This girl is telling me she wants to go for a trip. <laughs> My bags are already packed. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah, you guys are going to be seeing the us. The Lord is watching vlogs. you yes, in our vlogs. vlogs. <laughs> You'll be seeing us, me and Lynn, because I've always actually wanted to visit her. And I know Lynn loves traveling. I love traveling as well. So you might see us on one of the trips, okay, <laughs> out of Uganda. <laughs> I am ready. I am ready. Yeah, guys. So anyways, let me end this video here. I don't want it to make it so long, but it's already long. But anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed today's topic. And if you're out there, if you have enjoyed what we have talked, uh, what we have discussed in today's um, 
sit down kindly drop a comment and let us know what have you learned what would you want us to do more me and lynn zabu drop a comment and let us know okay and again don't forget to leave a sweet comment for your they girls. must be sweet yeah? <laughs> leave a sweet comment because whenever i leave a sweet comment you guys are motivating us yes. to work more and more and again if you haven't subscribed to our channels what are you waiting for i always tell you guys we bring for you exclusive content kindly do subscribe like share and comment all right all right all right guys we shall catch you in the next one we love you all love is for free bye, bye. <laughs>